Hi everybody, my name is Barry Schwartz and this is the Search Buzz video recap. Today is Friday, December 8th and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable at seroundtable.com over the past week. First up, um, I posted my big Google Webmaster report for December. It pretty much goes through all the big things that happened over the past uh, 30 days. So if you were on vacation for a large part of it, you might want to go ahead and catch up over there. It really gives you a quick way of catching up on the past month or so. Um, so just take a look at that if you are interested. Moving on, Google um, has responded to this article going out by the, the outline, uh, basically named uh, blog, for bri blog Bribes. And the title of the, of the article is How Brands Secretly Buy Their Way Into Forbes, Fast Company, and Huffington Post Stories. Now, of course, we've covered this type of stuff a lot in the past. We actually co covered it how Google actually has um, discussed how they don't count links from them. We even covered how Forbes, Inc., Huffington Post, um, Enter, uh, Entrepreneur, and a bunch of other magazines actually went ahead and started no following posts from guest contributors. Um, but Danny Sullivan um, felt it was he needed to go ahead and respond to it as well. So he went ahead and said, basically he said the same thing that Google has been saying for years. Google doesn't always count those links. If they are counting it and somebody on the manual action team finds it, Google will go ahead and uh, take action on it. Of course, their algorithms tried to go automatically, you know, defeated and as well basically saying warning publishers who are allowing this type of stuff either either intentionally or unintentionally <coughs> and it seems like it's happening a lot unintentionally is basically saying you know both the publisher and those and the webmasters they're linking to are going to go could go ahead and be penalized both of them so that's that's an issue for the publishers that are allowing guest contributors to do whatever they want without any moderation and of course it's an issue for the person, though the person that have this being linked to, because Google take action on both. That being said, this is nothing new. This is going on for years and years. Um, it is a bit surprising. Google actually, they actually listed a link of those sites that were actually included in that, including a bunch of SEO blogs and so forth. Um, thankfully, I don't allow guest contributors on my site. I'm pretty much the only one who writes here, and I personally, over the 14 years or so, um, covering search. Um, I've never, um, I've never actually taken any money for coverage or for any links um, in that coverage. Of course, we did have the side roll where we have you know sponsor links, but nothing in the organic coverage uh, around that um, going forward. So, um, which reminds me, I forgot to put on the list that I've cover, uh, I've been covering for 14, uh, 14 years. So let me just bring that up so I don't forget. All right, moving on. So again, that's nothing new. It's just surprising to see um, get a lot of attention. Of course, Google sends out those reminders as well. And you don't want to go ahead and you know pay for links or do things that are unnatural because eventually it will come to bite you, even if your competitors are doing it now. Google announced that they will uh, render Ajax natively um, these days or going forward sometime in the second quarter of 2018. And that means they will stop using the or stop crawling the old Ajax crawl scheme. Okay, back in um, um, a couple months ago, they actually hinted that they will stop crawling and indexing content from the old schema, uh, the old uh, Ajax uh, crawling scheme. Um, and they actually deprecated that about two years ago officially. Uh, and John Mueller went ahead and wrote a blog post at the Google blog describing what the changes are and what to look out for. If you are, you know, Ajax, uh, Ajax website, I would definitely go ahead and recommend that you register your website with Google Search Console. Make sure it's all verified because Google will be sending notices to those Ajax-based sites that have these issues. So definitely take a look at that um, and hopefully things will be okay for you guys. Google has officially confirmed they have extended the search results snippets, the little description that is below the search results. Um, they extended it to a maximum of 320 characters. Um, so the snippets are right over here. So this is a snippet. This is a snippet. And Danny Sullivan said, yeah, he confirmed it. Google actually sent me an email saying, yes, it's confirmed. Our meta descriptions could be longer. Google says, do not go ahead. You have no need to go ahead and update your meta descriptions. Um, Google, most of that time when it goes longer, is going to dynamically pull content from your website or other sources to build your meta descriptions. Of course, um, we're looking for Google to actually confirm the meta description aspect a little bit more. Danny Sullivan said he's looking into it. He has not um, wrote a post or anything about that in terms of what my webmasters to do. At this point, Google says hold off on changing any of your meta descriptions, even though the snippets are officially longer in many cases. 
Again, those snippets have been dynamic for a while, uh, but now they could go pretty much much longer. Google announced that their feature snippets are getting better. They've added um, a bunch of little features, including more images, related searches, and so forth in the feature snippets area. So more images, more uh, other related searches. They also went added related content, as you can see in this GIF. Videos, people also search for, images, etc., and related people. So if you're doing a search of somebody, um, you can actually bring up related people in there as well. So that's an update to the feature snippets, which Google confirmed. Google did not confirm this, but Google seems to be showing the best answers for forum threads. Um, so what you'll see come up is basically if you do a search for like a technical thing, um, Google's going to show threads. And sometimes if those threads are in a format Google can understand, they're going to show a carousel of the answers from those threads. It actually labels maybe some of the best answers. Here's that the desktop view. Here's the mobile view with a carousel. Again, best answers. Um, this is, seems to be rolling out to a bunch of uh, search results, so definitely keep an eye out for that. I personally was not able to re uh, replicate it, but a lot of people are starting to see this more and more every day. Google's knowledge uh, car uh, cards are actually adding notable moments. So you can see here is an example of a carousel with notable moments for the Prime Minister of Canada. And it actually pulls different websites to as a carousel format to show you notable moments in a timeline format, which is another cool little feature. Google did not confirm that either. Um, Google's John Mueller said technically, remember we discussed how you can't have these AMP teaser pages where the AMP content says read more and then it links to the full experience on the HTML view. You cannot do that according to Google. They're going to go ahead and penalize. But if you have a AMP page that has read more or see the full example that links to an HTML canonical version of a read more page, then that's okay. Because as long as the content is equivalent, John Mueller is saying it's okay. So you can link your AMP page teaser content to a mobile page teaser content and then eventually, I guess, have a read more from there if you wanted to. Of course, that might frustrate your users beyond belief, and I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but technically, you could probably do that. Uh, Google's John Mueller wants to know how and why and what you will use voice search filters in Google Search Console Analytics for. So if you want to tell John Mueller about that, definitely go ahead and uh, post him on Twitter. Um, and there's a lot of examples of why people want it. Google's been telling us for a while they will be bringing it to us. Maybe they're close to building those reports now. We'll see. Um, Google officially said that the question and answer feature that you saw uh, for the local results on mobile is now officially rolled out to desktop. Uh, we've seen Google testing this for a while. Here's the example of the Googleplex version with Q&As um, on the desktop knowledge, local knowledge card. So that's pretty cool as well. That's, been rolled, that's actually officially live now. Um, Google's testing a new mobile interface that is completely um, showing fewer results as well as letting you just like load more results below. Um, so here's a, Justin brings a bunch of other people been noticing this, but here's a snippet you can see here. So how to use a map, here's the feature snippet. People also ask one result, videos, two results, and that's it. You have related searches and also see more results. You click that, that would dynamically load more results below. Google's been testing this. I see more and more people are actually noticing it. I'm not sure if this is going to go live or if Google's just testing this more and more. Google has a, seems to have officially rolled out the hotel price sliders, both on desktop and mobile. So if you're looking for hotels, you will get this price slider that they've been testing for months and months that can let you filter those results both on desktop and mobile. Again, yeah, Google has not confirmed that yet. Um, the other week, we reported that Google's using audiobooks or showing audiobooks related content. Um, and because of that, um, Aaron Bradley, who's the, the schema or markup expert, basically said, yeah, you can actually see here that um, you can take the, board, uh, the type format audiobook and Google's actually able to mark, you're able to mark up your, your schema there. There is a beta that you can partake about if you are interest, interested and use audiobooks on your website. Um, you can definitely mark up your content like that and participate in the beta to hopefully get in those new audiobook schemas. And finally, not finally, um, uh, the Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa th um, decorations are live on Google. So every year they, they decorate their search results, both on desktop and mobile. Um, so ignore the logo on the top, but basically here is like the UI for the banner around the Christmas theme in Google. Here is the Hanukkah theme with the menorah and jelly donuts and dreidels. And here's the Kwanzaa theme as well. So if you do these searches on desktop and mobile, you'll get those decorations. Um, and of course, we want to continue our honor roll of the people we would like to 
thank in our search community and, uh, and, and mention, of course, and give them honor. Um, I'm not going to go through each one. You have, have a long post, but basically it, this week it's Lisa Barone, who I've known, for, I've known all these people for a long time, Rand Fiskin, Barry Adams, Kim Krausberg, and of course Amun John. So thank you all. We honor you in the search community. Definitely take a look at those blog posts um, to read more about them and their contributions. Uh, before I forget, um, let me just bring this up. So it reminded me. So I think, yeah. So Saturday was the 14th year of my coverage of the search industry, specifically at this site when I first launched the site 14 years ago. And I specifically, you know, covering the search industry like I've always done for the past 14 years. Some quick stats for you. You can look at this up um, pretty quickly. Our, our traffic is up about 12% year over year across the years. We have over 25,000 stories here. Uh, I wrote over 22,000 of those myself. Um, we used to have guest uh, helpers that wrote stories as well. Um, in the past year, I wrote 1,800 stories um, and so forth. Um, the most important stories, in my opinion, were around, um, specifically around these algorithm updates, like the Fred update, Google not confirming stuff anymore, around those things. The mobile first index started to roll out slowly. Google fighting fake news. Um, Search console beta coming out. Um, hopefully a year's worth of data will be in there. And of course, Danny Sullivan leaving search engine land and joining Google, which is kind of a bizarre world for me. Um, so definitely take a look at that. I, I kind of summarized what I thought the past 14 years um, has been, what the most important things were this year, what I expect the future to, to hold the next year or so around that. And I appreciate everybody reading, listening, watching the video and so forth. Um, and I appreciate all that. So thank you very much. And everyone have a great weekend. Again, today is Friday. Uh, December 8th, and this is the search news we covered over at the Search Engine Roundtable, sdroundtable.com over the past week. Everyone have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next. Bye.